Thank you to Shopify and ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. More on them after the reaction. How's it going, citizens of the Reject Nation? We are here for another solo cinematic sojourn, sojourn. catching up on a 90s classic uh, that I have uh, heard a lot about over time. I remember seeing the picture of Brad Pitt in the calendar section of the newspaper, being very compelled by that image. Uh, and since then, the mystique has only built. I can only imagine what the actual experience of watching the movie will be like at this point. But uh, we're going to break that illusion in just a moment. It's time for David Fincher's Fight Club, based on the novel by Chuck Palahniuk. Palahniuk. Now, however you say that, leave a like for cinematic adaptations of novels. Leave a like for uh, what I am sure is going to be a completely inspiring and uh, aspirational motion, motion picture. picture. Uh, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified every time one of these movie reactions comes your way or could come your way. Um, and as always, big thanks to Prepper for helping us edit down these highlights. It is tough work. And if you would like to see everything that doesn't make these reaction highlight reels, you want to get the full Fight Club experience alongside me, come on over to patreon.com slash the real rejects where you can sync up with your own copy. We also got a ton of other shows and movies over there with highlights and watch alongs included. Without further ado, my friends, get yourself some reject merch. I, I psyched you out. Haha. Uh yeah, rejectnationshop.com. If you want to support the channel and rock a little swag in the process, show your reject nation pride. Come on over there. It's a great way. It's our one of our favorite ways to support the channel. And uh, now, without further ado, uh, let's put up our dukes because it's time for Fight Club. People are always asking me if I know Tyler Durden. Three minutes. Uh huh. This oh, is it. Whoa. Hey. Would you like to say a few words to mark the occasion? <laughs> With a barrel between your teeth, you speak only in vowels. <laughs> We have front row seats for this theater of mass destruction. Oh my, whoa! Project Mayhem wrapped the foundation columns of a dozen buildings with blasting gelatin. Damn! Primary charges will blow base charges and a few square blocks will be reduced to smoldering rubble. I know this because Tyler knows this. Okay. I realized that all of this, the gun, the bombs, the revolution, has got something to do with a girl named Marla Singer. Of course, it's always- <laughs> Hello, I'm Bob. Bob had bitch- What?! <laughs> this was a support group for men with testicular cancer. The big moosey slobbering all over me, that was Bob. We're still men. We're still men. Between those huge, sweating- that hung enormous, the way you'd think of gods as <laughs> You cry now. You cry now. Please clap. <laughs> Let me start earlier. For six months, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. Hey, what's up, product placement? Everything's far away. Everything's a copy of a copy. Ooh, a copy of a copy of a- I need you out of town a little more this week. We got some red flags to cover. Call me from the road if there's any snags. He was full of pet. Must have had his grande latte enema. <laughs> Sure. I want to see that scene. Grande Latte Anima would be on like the Idiocracy Starbucks menu. If I saw something clever, like a little coffee table in the shape of a yin yang, I had to have it. Sure. The Klipsk personal office unit, the Hovatrek home exer bike, even the Rizlampa wire lamps of environmentally friendly unbleached paper. Wow. This is reminding me of like a. A malaised American psycho. You can't die for insomnia. What about narcolepsy? Wow. I'm not off. I wake up in strange places. I have no idea how I got there. You need to lighten up. <laughs> you want my opinion? You gotta lighten up. I'm in pain. You want to see pain? Swing by First Methodist Tuesday nights. See the guys with testicular cancer. Oh my. That's pain. Whoa, God. These flashes. They're good at embodying this, yeah insomniac perspective and like with his narration being so sort of like detached and lackadaisical almost she had her first child last week uh with a new husband okay i'm, I'm glad for her oh <laughs> oh dude it's time for the one-on-ones so let's all of us here follow thomas's good example and really open ourselves up oh my whoa <laughs> i want to go back and pause for those but I don't want to mess up the stream. His eyes already shrink wrapped in tears. Oh. oh my goodness gracious. Those awkward little steps. <laughs> 
must have given him some kind of prosthetic. Bob had been a champion bodybuilder. Oh you my. Know that chest expansion program you see on late night TV. That was his idea. Wow. We must increase our bust. Using steroids, habanol, and withdrawal. Oh, they use that on race horses for Christ's sakes. God, and the high register in his voice. You can cry. Oh boy. Oh my God. <laughs> How many hundreds of times did they do these takes? <laughs> and then something happened. I let go. Really good. Oh my, you had a breakthrough. I found freedom. Losing all hope was freedom. Whoa. <laughs> like the Jesus cloth, oh my God. And a Rorschach and you've got the choir going like it's on some kind of old cassette tape, jeez. Babies don't sleep this well. I became addicted. What? You just crash in every support group possible? Whoa, oh my god. People always assume the worst. They cried harder. <laughs> then I cried harder. Whoa. Unlock your emotions, man. Vulnerability is the key. Now keep this going. Remember to breathe. And step forward through the back door of the room. Where does it lead? To your cave. Whoa. From the Matterhorn Mountain. You're going deeper into your cave. And you're cool. going to find... Rupert? <laughs> Jeez, these names he's choosing. Should be Slap. Mr. Popper. What? <laughs> Alan. Every evening I died. <laughs> and every evening I was born again. Sure. Resurrected. <laughs> Bob loved me because he thought my <laughs> testicles were removed too. This was my vacation. This is like a really messed up David Sedaris essay. <laughs> and she Whoa. ruined everything. everything. This is cancer, right? <laughs> Jeez. Coming looking like a Shinigami. Looking like Ryuk right now. <laughs> she was a liar. <laughs> I had seen her at Free and Clear in Parasites Group Thursdays, and again at Seize the Day. My tuberculosis Friday night. <laughs> this is territorial about his clicks. Her lie reflected my lie. The, suddenly, the gif? I felt nothing. Wow. I couldn't sleep. <laughs> yeah. How many thousands of takes did that smoke shot require? <laughs> Next. Whoa, whoa. Is that Tyler in the flat? Like, kind of look like Brad Pitt, but obviously the point is it's never long enough for you to catch it. <laughs> now, let's ready ourselves for guided meditation. Oh, yes. If I did have a tumor, I'd name it Marla. Why? <laughs> Slide. Slide. <laughs> fly, Ed, fly. You're a faker. You're not dying. Sorry. In the Tibetan philosophy, Sylvia Plath sense of the word. I know we're all we're all dying. Uh -huh. So you're a tourist. I saw you. Saw you had melanoma. I saw you had tuberculosis. I saw you had <laughs> testicular cancer. And now you're gatekeeping. <laughs> Practicing what? You're telling me off. Is it going as well as you hoped? Rupert. Rupert. I'll expose you. Go ahead. I'll expose you. Yeah. What would you expect, dude? <laughs> Why do you do it? When people think you're dying, man, they really, really listen to you instead of just... Instead of just waiting for their turn to speak. Yeah, ooh. Instead of just trying to, yeah, solve your shit and whisk you away. Look, you don't want to get into this. It becomes an addiction. Really? Oh my god, there should be a, a, a support group, Addicts Anonymous. We're gonna split up the week, okay? You take lymphoma and tuberculosis. <laughs> you take tuberculosis, my smoking doesn't go over at all. This is so absurd. <laughs> You can't have the whole brain. Take the first and third Sunday of the month. Deal. Deal. Maybe we should exchange numbers. Should we? We, we might want to switch nights. Oh my goodness. Okay. She's always... She's always, like, gracefully gliding through the chaotic traffic. You wake up at SeaTac. Whoa. You wake up at O'Hare. Dallas, Fort Worth. Lose an hour, gain an hour. Check in for that flight doesn't begin for another two hours, sir. Oh no. If you wake up at a different time, in a different place, <laughs> could you oh, wake up as a oh, different person? There's your boy. Could you wake up as that guy? On a long enough timeline, the survival rate for everyone drops to zero. Woo. I was a recall coordinator. My job was to apply the formula. Here's the answer went to the windshield. Three points. 
Three points. Should we initiate a recall? The father must have been huge. You see where the fats burned in the seat? Wow. Very modern art. <laughs> <laughs> Ghoulish. Take the number of vehicles in the field and multiply the result by the average out of court settlement, C. <laughs> if X is less than the cost of a recall, we don't do one. Wow. Which car company do you work for? <laughs> yep. <laughs> My thoughts exactly. Every time the plane banked too sharply on takeoff for landing, I prayed for a crash. Uh. What a nightmare! Oh my god! Life insurance pays off triple if you die on a business trip. What? It does? Is that a f somebody fact check that and get in the comments? You feel you would be unable or unwilling to perform the duties listed on the safety card? Please ask a flight attendant to reseat you. It's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> An exit door procedure at 30,000 feet. The illusion of safety. <sighs> oh man, there's so much illusion of safety in our society today. In a catastrophic emergency, you're taking giant panic breaths. Suddenly you become euphoric. You accept your fate. Woof. Emergency water landing 600 miles an hour. <sighs> faces calm as Hindu cows. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they should draw an honest version of the airline pamphlet. <laughs> what do you do for a living? Why? So you can pretend like you're interested. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to hear, man. Let's network. I love networking. I'm all about networking. I make and I sell soap. <laughs> the poster. And this is how I met Tyler Durden. Tyler Durden. If you mix equal parts of gasoline and frozen orange juice concentrate, you can make napalm. Ah, uh, good to know. One can make all kinds of explosives using simple household items. Really? If one was so inclined. <laughs> <laughs> I idolized this man immediately. How I came to live with Tyler is airlines have this policy about vibrating luggage. <laughs> really? How many electric razors and personal wands is that related to? My suitcase was vibrating. Nine times out of ten, it's an electric razor. There you go. Every once in a while. Ah, you knew this was coming, Pete. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Home was a condo on the 15th floor of a filing cabinet for widows. And a place to be somebody. The walls were solid concrete. A foot of concrete's important when your next door neighbor lets her hearing aid go and has to watch game shows at full volume. Scat. Or when a volcanic blast of debris that used to be your furniture and personal effects blows out of your floor to ceiling windows and sails flaming into the night. Damn, this building looks familiar. I suppose these things happen. Whoa. Tyler, come and blow up your place. <laughs> you like nab your info from the airline while your bag was out and like come. The police would later tell me that the pilot light might have gone out, letting out just a little bit of gas. That gas could have slowly filled the condo. Whoa. There's some CG in those shots for sure. Compressor could have clicked on. Looks good, but it's interesting because you know we think of we don't think of CG in movies like this the same way. Oof. Paper Street Soap. If you ask me now, I couldn't tell you why I called him. Man, R.I.P. Payphones. Very cinematic. So much you can do. It's a long lens and a punching some numbers, slamming it down on the receiver. <laughs> Exit the Matrix. Hello. Who's this? <laughs> Brad Pitt's junk food contract in full effect. There, there was no answer. I'm, I'm at a payphone. Yeah, it's our six to nine. I never pick up my phone. <laughs> Just chowing over there. I had it all. I had a stereo that was very decent, a wardrobe that was getting very respectable. Oh man, all your s stuff. Do you know what a duvet is? Uh, yes. It's a blanket. Just a blanket. And why do guys like you and I know what a duvet is? It's a, it's a thick blanket. Murder, crime, poverty, these things don't concern me. What concerns me are celebrity magazines, television with 500 channels, some guy's name on my underwear. Gotta get the best name on your underwear. The things you own end up owning you. Oh, 
He said it. Seen that on a lot of infographics. I should find a hotel. Just ask, man. Three pitches of beer and you still can't ask. Aww. Kiss him, you fool. You called me because you need a place to stay. Oh, hey, hey, no, no, no. Yes, you I, did. I mean, so just ask. Aww. Yeah, stop diddling the man. Can I stay at your place? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would have trouble getting to that point. <laughs> I want you to do me a favor. I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Oh, here we go. Let me tell you a little bit about Tyler Durden. Tyler was a night person. Oh, hey there. Let's do this. He had one part-time job as a projectionist. He lived in Blowout. If you look for it, you can see these little dots come into the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Yeah. Oh! In the industry, we call them cigarette burns. Yes. He flips the projectors, movie keeps right on going, and nobody in the audience has any idea. Because <laughs> it affords him other interesting opportunities. Like splicing single frames of pornography into family films. Hey! Rage's dog with the celebrity voices meet for the first time in Real 3. And that's when you'll catch a flash of Tyler's contribution to the film. Of course. And the subsequent BuzzFeed article. <laughs> Never been in a fight, you? No, but that that's a good thing. No, it is not. How much can you know about yourself if you've never been in a fight? Oh. Hey, what? This is crazy. You want me to hit you? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> His mannerisms are great. This is so f stupid. <gasps> and go. Oof! You hit me in the ear! Oh, oh, Jesus, looked... I'm sorry! Ow! Christ! By the ear! That, that, looked, that looked authentic. No. Oh, jeez! <laughs> oh my god, how awkward. This has got to be one of those movies that has, like, accidental, you know, like, actual contact. I wonder if that was one of those. Wow! Yeah, damn. Oh. We should do this again sometime. Homie is carrying himself, carrying himself a different. I don't know how Tyler found that house, but he <laughs> said he'd been there for a year. Squ squatter's rights. That's you. That's me. That's Toilet. Toilet. What a shithole. <laughs> there were no neighbors, just some warehouses and a paper mill. That fart smell of steam. <laughs> like in the building from the Punisher movie. And they just always out here tussling outside Lou's. Wow! Oh. Can I be next? Damn, drawing a crowd. We were finding out more and more that we were not alone. Oh my god, have you even been to your support groups? It was on the tip of everyone's tongue. Tyler and I just gave it a name. Tom Waits, boy. <laughs> oh, you got a space now. <laughs> you, you got your little support group meeting hall. Tyler gave the rules that he and I decided. <laughs> Here it comes. Welcome to Fight Club. The first rule of Fight Club is... Oh. You do not talk about Fight Club. There you go. The second rule of Fight Club is... You do, you not, do not talk about, talk about, Fight, about Club. Fight Club. <laughs> Third rule of Fight Club. Someone yells stop, goes limp, taps out. The fight is over. Okay. Safe word. That's good. Fourth rule, only two guys to a fight. Fifth rule, one fight at a time, fellas. So no Ip Man, you can't take on like 10 dudes? Seventh rule, fights will go on as long as they have to. Oof, taking off your wedding ring. And final rule, if this is your first night at Fight Club, you have to fight, right? You have to fight. Of course. This kid from work couldn't remember whether you ordered pens with blue ink or black. Ah. Uh... But Ricky was a god for 10 minutes. Food court. God, Ricky. Sometimes all you could hear were the flat, hard packing sounds over the yelling. Yeah. Or the wet choke when someone caught their breath and sprayed. Ow. But Fight Club only exists in the hours between when Fight Club starts and when Fight Club ends. Sure. Even if I could tell someone they had a good fight, I wouldn't be talking to the same man. Who you were in Fight Club is not who you were in the rest of the world. It's like the purge. 
Oh, yeah, buddy. Oh, God. Is he just wailing on his nuts? I guess no rules. Aside from the three rules. Wow. Wow, dude. The way dudes used to get buff in, in this age is different than it is now. It's just that, like, lean cut muscle. Feral animal instinct. Like in a Pentecostal church. Ah! Oh! People gonna get killed. When the fight was over, nothing was solved. But nothing mattered. People must die here. Fight Club became the reason to cut your hair short or trim your fingernails. Any historical figure. I fight Gandhi. <laughs> it's like epic rap battles of history. <laughs> Hello? Where have you been the last eight weeks? Yeah. I haven't seen you at any support groups. Yeah. We split them up. Yeah, but you haven't been going to yours. <laughs> How do you know? Because I've been. I cheated. I found a new one. Really? Oh my god. Men only. God. Like the testicle thing? <laughs> I'm gonna start saying that to people. I got a stomach full of Xanax. I took what was left of a bottle. Oh. This isn't a for reals thing. This is probably one of those cry for help things. Golly. Do you wanna listen? And see if my spirit can use a phone. <laughs> Jeez, dude. You won't believe this dream I had last night. Yeah, I can hardly believe anything about last night. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go to last night, Anonymous. What, what are you doing here? Everyone in this movie is feral. <laughs> <laughs> you got some f***ed up friends, I'm telling you. <laughs> yup. <laughs> With friends like these, who needs anybody else? I already knew the story before he told it to me. Ooh. Have you ever heard of death rattle before? Do you think it'll live up to its name? Oh, we'll find out, I'm sure. To evacuate soul. Oh. Now, how could Tyler, of all people, think it was a bad thing that Marla Singer was about to die? Uh, I don't know. Maybe he wants to get with her. Yep, yep, he does. Oh. Somebody call the Oh, no. 5 0 split, bro. What the f- <laughs> She's lost faith in herself! Miss Singer, let us help you! She's a monster! You have every reason to live! She's infectious human weight! Oh my god. I fall asleep. I'm done for. Yeah. You're gonna have to keep me up all night. <laughs> What's your name, your birthday, your address? He was obviously able to handle it. You're not into her, are you? Uh-oh. God, not at all. Put a gun to my head and paint the walls with my brains. Well, that's good. Hey. Can't have you talking to her about me. Why would I talk to her? See anything about me or what goes on in this house to her or to anybody. Okay. I mean, who does he... Who does he have to tell other than the Fight Club guys? <laughs> wow. I could have moved to another room. This house is going to collapse. <laughs> But I didn't. Oh, there's some mood lighting for you. What the f? f what are you doing? Just going to bed. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are the kitchen gloves on? Who are you talking to? Shut up. So. I became the calm little center of the world. I was the Zen master. Yep. Gonna soothe the Hulk within. Is that your blood? Some of it, yeah. <laughs> Take the rest of the day off. Come back Monday with some clean clothes. Get yourself together. Oh. Give up all your flaming worldly possessions. Go live in a dilapidated <laughs> house in a toxic waste part of town. And you have to come home to this. Just can't win, man. Life is a prison. Hello? Yes, this is Detective Stern with the arson unit. Oh. We have some new information about the incident at your former condo. I don't know if you're aware, but it seems that someone sprayed Freon into your front door lock. Then tapped it with a chisel to shatter the cylinder. Whoa. Dynamite. Dynamite? Left a residue of ammonium oxalate. Whoa. Do you know what this means? No, what does it mean? Chemistry. It means it was homemade. 
<laughs> See, whoever set this homemade dynamite could have blown out your pilot light days before the actual explosion. Who would go and do such a thing? I'll ask the questions. Yeah, who? Who knows how to do such a thing? Tell me you blew it all up. That's what he wants to hear. <laughs> Are you saying I'm a suspect? No, no. I may need to talk to you a little further, so how about you just let me know if you're going to leave town? <laughs> well, how much he doesn't sell it. Like, I love a, a, a moment of acting where the character is also acting. I got this dress at a thrift store for one dollar. It was worth every penny. All hundred of them. Someone loved it intensely for one day. Oh. Then tossed it like a Christmas tree. Jeez. People love Christmas trees for like a month. You know what? I really think it's time you got out of here. Don't worry, I'm leaving. Yeah, not that we don't love your little visit. You know, you are such a nutcase. I can't even begin to keep up. Yes. <laughs> That's like a some kind of impressionist painting right there. What are we doing tonight? We make soap. We make soap? To make soap, first we render fat. Oh, where are you gonna get that? That's right, we, we, we heard about his soap business. Nowadays, more than ever, he can have his own little cottage brand selling bricks on the on the Instagram. Come on, Tyler. The salt omelet has to be just right, so the best fat for making soap comes from humans. Of course it does. Oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> oh. Oh, my God. Jesus, no. No, no. Oh, my God. Once the towel hardens, you skim off a layer of glycerin. Glycerin. Yeah, with enough soap, we can blow up just about anything. Tyler was full of useful information. Yeah. Some people's found their clothes got cleaner when they washed them at a certain point in the river. Do you know why? No. The current? Because human sacrifices were once made on the hills above this river. You knew that was coming. <sighs> Something like it. This is lye, the crucial ingredient. Once it mixed with the melted fat of the bodies, a thick white soapy discharge crept into the river. That's your hand, please. Ugh. What Ugh. is this? This is a chemical burn. It will hurt more than you've ever been burned, and you will have a scar. Whoa, 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 whoa. Without pain, without sacrifice, we would have nothing. Fear is the mind killer. This uh -huh. is your pain. This is your burning hand. It's right here. I'm going to my cave. I'm going to my cave. I'm going to find my power handle. No. No. If our fathers failed, what does that tell you about God? Oh, no, no, I don't. Woof. Consider the possibility that God does not like you, he never wanted you. In all probability, he hates you. Uh. We don't need him. If we don't agree, I got a damnation, man. Redemption. We are God's unwanted children. So be it. Okay, so it's a very Lucifer of you. Please let me have it, please. First, you have to give up. First, you have to know, not fear. No, and someday you're gonna die. Oh. You don't know how this feels. <laughs> oh, he does. Yeah. It's only after we've lost everything that we're free to do anything. <sighs> I guess so. Oh, wow. Ow. Congratulations. You're one step closer to hitting bottom. <sighs> I was at the bottom. He was wearing his yellow tie. I didn't even wear a tie to work anymore. The first rule of Fight Club is you don't talk about Fight Club. Whoa, what the, who got that? Make a managerial decision. You find this, what would you do? Yeah. I'd be very careful because the person who wrote that is dangerous. And this button down Oxford cloth psycho might just snap and then stalk from office. Oh my God. Armalite AR-10 carbine gas powered semi-automatic weapon pumping round after round in the colleagues and coworkers. Big man. Well, maybe you just shouldn't bring me every little piece of trash you happen to pick up. Wow, dude. Damn. Compliance and liability. My s*** in run off. What? What are you talking about? I need you to check and see if there's a lump in my bra. <sighs> That's nice. Take your food to Mrs. Hanover, Mrs. Rains. Where are they, exactly? Tragically, they're dead. I'm uh, alive and I'm in poverty. You want any? Sure. Meals on wheels. Right there. Uh, feel anything? No. No, nothing. Well, that's a relief. Uh. Could check your prostate. 
Uh, I think I'm okay. <laughs> well, thanks anyway. Dang. Are we done? <laughs> See you around. Damn, dude. It's not very alpha of you, bro. It's not very enlightened and detached from all this bullshit, bro. Cornelius? Cornelius? Uh-oh. It's me. Bob. Bob. I got something so much better now. Really? What is it? Well, the first rule is... Oh, my God. I'm supposed to talk about it. And the second rule is... Huh? Bob, Bob. I'm a member. Yeah. I've never seen you there. I go Tuesdays and Thursdays. I go Saturday. Congratulations. Damn. Have you heard about the guy that invented this thing? Well, uh, yeah, actually. There are all kinds of things. Yeah. Supposedly, he was born in a mental institution, and he sleeps only one hour a night. Uh, he's the bastard son of a thousand maniacs. Oh my God, no! Come on, Bob. Bring the meatloaf. Bat out of hell, this shit. Tapping out. Bring your testosterone back. This was mine and Tyler's gift. Oh my Our god. Our gift to the world. Sure. Who are you? Who am I? Yeah. Who am I? Who are you? I'm fing Luke. Who the f are you? <laughs> you don't own this place. I do. Uh oh. Y'all are gonna need a permit. I want everybody out of here right now. Hey, you should join our club. Did you hear what I just said? You and your friend. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Shit, I lost it. Oh my god. <laughs> ah, Lou. We really like this place. Yeah. <laughs> that was so demented. Oh, 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 oh. Hey! Oh my god! Patrick Witz! My man! <laughs> Shouts out to Pat Jankowitz. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Please let us speak a little Please! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Thanks, Lou. You too, big guy. You too. <laughs> this week, each one of you has a homework assignment. <laughs> You're gonna go out. You're gonna start a fight with a total stranger. Yes! <laughs> right there with the flame. This is not as easy as it sounds. Whoa, was that Bob at the lobby there? Whoa, dude. Normal people. Just about anything to avoid a fight. This is a priest. <laughs> what courtyard, like atrium thing is that? Oh, oh my God! I wonder how they, knowing how David Fincher works, I want, I want to know how they shot these fights. Need to talk. This like bouncy anime music. Where to begin with your constant absenteeism, with your unpresentable appearance? <sighs> I am Jack's complete lack of surprise. <laughs> You're the Department of Transportation. Someone informs you that this company installs front seat mounting brackets that never pass collision tests, and fuel injectors that explode and burn people alive. What then? Oh. Are you threatening me? No. Get the f out of here, you're fired. Uh, yeah, better solution. <laughs> you keep me on the payroll as an outside consultant, and in exchange for my salary, my job will be never to tell people these things that I know. Oh, wow. Security? I am Jack's smirking revenge. Ah, What are we doing here, bud? What the hell are you doing? <laughs> what the f <laughs> what? That hurt. Sure. Oh my god. No, please stop. It's like watching the crazies or something. For some reason I ah. thought of my first fight with Tyler. <laughs> and my man over here is just like giving the most, you know, vivid <laughs> reaction faces. 
Just like, huh. Just show up and respond to all the crazy shit this dude does. This guy is gonna be like completely traumatized by all of his interactions with you. Now look, just give me the paychecks like I asked, and you won't ever see me again. And right then, at our most wow, excellent dude. moment together. Uh-huh. Telephone, computer, fax machine, 52 weekly paychecks, and 48 airline flight coupons. This is how Tyler and I oh. were able to have Fight Club every uh, night of the week. What? Jesus Christ, dude. Tyler was now involved in a class action lawsuit with the Pressman Hotel over the urine content of their soup. <laughs> of course. Of course he is. Tyler is an entrepreneur, if nothing else. Tyler dreamed up new homework assignments. He handed them out in sealed envelopes. Let's go. What the f- Going, oh, you're destroying everyone's TV, satellite connections, and all that. Copies of Alien on the shelf. Alien 3, Fincher. Oh my god, dude. Uh, <laughs> they like magnetizing all the tapes, just inflicting their ideology on everyone on Earth. Did you know there's a fight club up in Delaware City? Yeah, I heard. Wow, dude. How many Fight Clubs were born due to this movie? And how many were formed due to the book? And what is the crossover? <laughs> hey, they got the accurate, real uh, airline pamphlets. Well done. Well done. Screaming faces and everything. Stop for a second. Hey, what are we doing? Turn around. What are we doing? Homework is starting. And a homework assignment. Human sacrifice. Oh yeah. On a long enough timeline, the survival rate for everyone drops to zero. Sure. Give me your wallet. You're going to die. <laughs> oh no. An expired community college student ID. What'd you study, Raymond? <laughs> Stuff. Stuff. What did you want oh. to be, Raymond K. Hassel? The question, <laughs> Raymond, was what, what did you want to be? Nope, 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 nope. Then they're animals. Oh. Your animals so... Stuff, yeah, I got that. Oh. If you're not on your way to becoming a veterinarian in six weeks, you will be dead. What the fuck? <laughs> now there's some motivation for you. Tomorrow will be the most beautiful day of Raymond Castle's life. His breakfast will taste better than any meal you and I have ever tasted. Dude, Tyler is Jigsaw. He had a plan, and it started to make sense in a Tyler sort of way. Tyler's jigsaw, and I like him now. Ugh. I can definitely see why this movie is so contentious. You are not your job. You're not how much money you have in the bank. You're not the car you drive. You're not the contents of your wallet. Or not your awesome wardrobe that's new in every scene. Whoa! You don't have to go. Please don't go. I need you so, my lovely. You still going to groups? Yeah. Nine days a week. Listen, um, what, what are you getting out of all this? What? <laughs> Is this making you happy? Is there a happy to be made? Yeah, well, sometimes. I don't know. I don't understand. I mean, why why does a weaker person need to latch on to a strong person? What 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 is that? Ugh. What do you get out of it? No, it's, it's not the same thing at all. I mean, it's That's totally different with us. We're, we're survival instincts. What do you mean by us? I'm sorry, are you, are you here? It's a love triangle with Tyler in the center. You're not talking about me, are you? No. That day you came over to my place to doctor. What was going on there? What are you talking about? Nothing. Nothing. I don't think so. Oh, come on, what do you want? Look at me. Oh, what's going on? This conversation. This conversation is over. Is over. I just can't win with you, can I? Nope. Too young. Ah, give the man a chance. Tell me he's too young. Old, too old, fat, too fat. Applicant. If the applicant then waits for three days without food, shelter, or encouragement, he may then enter and begin his training. What? You're too young to train here. End of story. Now quit wasting our time. Get the f out of here. Ugh. Do you think you're ever getting in this house? You're never getting in this house. You've got to be aware of the ritual of this, I guess, if you're... That rope, boy. Oh! 
Two pair of black pants. Yes, sir. One pair of black boots. Yes, sir. Two uh. pair of black socks. Yes, sir. Three hundred dollars personal burial money. Yes, sir. Personal burial money. <laughs> You're too old, fat man. Aww. Bob. Bob. Stick it out. Aww. He wants Bob to be accepted. There's a good guy deep down in there. That's got to be tough as an actor. I feel like an emotional moment Shot uniquely to shave your head on screen. Whoa! Ready to sacrifice himself for great good. <sighs> Understanding is cruel, the monkey said as he launched to space. And you, uh. you're too... Damaged. Blonde. Blonde! And so it went. Tyler built himself an army. We are the all singing, all dancing crap of the world. <laughs> you got a renovation crew out of it. You just wanted to stop living in the heights of depravity. Police Commissioner Jacobs has just arrived. Commissioner, oh, no. Commissioner, could you Whew, good catch. Jesus Christ. This is one of many recent acts of vandalism around the city, somehow related to underground boxing clubs. Oh my. Commissioner Jacobs, who just arrived on the scene here of a four alarm fire that broke out about an hour. <laughs> Ugh. Wow, dude. Did you guys do? They did a terrorism. Sir, the first rule of Project Mayhem is you do not ask questions, sir. Yeah, you follow blindly. You're bug eyed overlord. The victory in the war against crime will not come overnight. It will take dedication and commitment. End crime in our time. This is only the beginning. I gotta take a piss. Ugh. This poor guy. Oh, jeez, dude. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, no. Don't look too pleased with yourself. Wowie. Wowie. Ah. Uh... Ooh, boy. Jeez, ooh, Christe. Is why are you checking? <laughs> You're gonna publicly state that there is no underground group, or these guys are gonna take your ball. Ugh. <laughs> oh, lordy, 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 lord. Now it's a Christopher Nolan movie. Oh. I am Jackson Flame's sense of rejection. Uh-oh. It's more of a time, boy. Hulk out on him! Smash him! Oof. Oof. Is... Is the Mutton Chops guy Dexter Fletcher? Oh! Leto went down! Jeez! Is he gonna kill him? Oh! I felt like putting a bullet between the eyes of every panda that wouldn't screw to save its species. Oh my goodness gracious. I wanted to breathe smoke. Oh my god. Where'd you go, psycho boy? <laughs> I felt like destroying something beautiful. Get him to a hospital. Yeah. Who gonna pay for that? Don't worry, Mr. Durden. Airport parking. Long term. Ha. Uh, you, Mr. Durden. Jesus. Recycle your animals. Why wasn't I told about Project Mayhem? The first rule of Project Mayhem is you do not ask questions. Jesus. Fight Club was the beginning. Now it's moved out of the basement. It's called Project Mayhem. When you and I started Fight Club together. Mischief, mayhem, and soap. This does not belong to us. We are not special. Dad, you, you should have told me. You give all the orders, dude. What do you want? Statement Ooh. of purpose? Should I email you? Should I put this on your action item list? Yeah. You need to forget about what you know. That's your problem. Forget about what you think you know about life, about friendship, and especially about you and me. Oh. I don't love you, Jack. What are you doing? Whoa. Guys, what would you wish you'd done before you die? Paint a self-portrait. Build a house. Wow. Is, is that, uh... Holt McCallany? The guy from, question, yeah, the guy from Mindhunter, damn. What you feel about your life? I don't know, I wouldn't feel anything good about my life. Is that what you want to hear me say? Fine. Come on! Not good. 
Wow. Wow. Look at you. You're pathetic. Why do you think I blew up your condo? Oh, yeah, there it is. Stop trying to control everything and just let go. Let it go. Let it go. Punch it into a pulp. <laughs> and now we don our seatbelts. Wow. <laughs> oh. Jesus Christ. I'd never been in a car accident. This must have been what all those people felt like before I filed them the statistics in my reports. Sure. You learn about a lot about yourself in a car wreck as well as a fight. In the world I see, you're stalking out through the damn canyon forest around the ruins of Rockefeller Center. <sighs> Feel better, champion. They must have shot a whole bunch of like horror stuff in this house. And I wonder if the interior is the same place as the exterior. Tyler? Tyler was gone. Whoa. Was I asleep? Organized. Wow, human sacrifice wall. The house had become a living thing. Wet inside from so many people sweating and breathing. So many people so in the house. Dank. Oh my god. I had to hug the walls. Trapped inside this clockwork of space monkeys. Uh. Cooking and working and sleeping in teams. Wow. Project Mayhem is expanding. It's under control, sir. Wow. My father dumped me. And they're still making soap? Is that how you make money? Aside from all his paychecks, like... <laughs> Can I come in? He's not here. What? No. Tyler isn't here. I didn't come to see Tyler. Tyler's gone. <sighs> Bummer. Go to her, man. You know you wanna. Go to a support group for old times. Start with AA. Whoa. We were supposed to kill two birds with one stone, destroy a piece of corporate art, and trash a franchise coffee bar. <laughs> Oh, and you got Jason Momoa's uh, sphere bomb from Fast X. Wow. The perfect chain reaction. It went smooth until <sighs> they shot Bob. Ow. They shot him in the head. Why? Bob. Oh. <laughs> okay, quick. We got to get rid of the evidence. We got to get rid of this body. Bury him. Bury him, Coral. This is a person. He's a friend of mine, and you're not gonna bury him in the guard. He was killed serving Project Mayhem, sir. Sir. This is a man, and he has a name, and it's Robert Paulson. The voice actor from Animaniacs? In death, a member of Project Mayhem has a name. Uh, His name is Robert Paulson. Oh my god. His name is Robert Paulson. Come on, guys. His please. name Stop it. is Robert Paulson. This is so strange. You're gonna will him back to life. His name is Robert, Robert Paulson. Paulson. His, His name, name is Robert Paulson. Paulson. His name is Robert Paulson. Ugh. <laughs> Gotta put on Tyler's shades. That's the key. Or eat some junk food. <laughs> what? Los Angeles. Tyler. Durden Tyler. Those plane tickets. I went to all the cities on Tyler's oh. used ticket stubs, bar hopping. I didn't know how or why, but I could look at 50 different bars and somehow I just knew. I'm looking for Tyler Durden. I wish I could help you. Uh-oh. Sir. Uh-oh. I've seen some of Tyler Durden's Reddit posts. I've seen him on 4chan. Tyler had been busy. Setting up franchises all over the country. My God. 
it's spreading like a miasma. Like nobody knows what he looks like. He has facial reconstructive surgery every three years. What? Is it true about Fight Club in Miami? Is Mr. Oh. Durden building an army? Fight Club Miami must be wild. I was living in the state of That's GTA 6. Everywhere I went, I felt I'd already been there. It was like following an invisible man. Deja vu. I was always just one step behind Tyler. This looks like one of the bars from the world's end. Welcome back, sir. How have you been? Wow! Do you know me? Is this a test, sir? This is not a test. You were in here last Thursday. You were standing exactly where you are now asking how good security is. It's tight as a drum, sir. <laughs> Who do you think I am? Are you sure uh, this isn't a test? No, this is not a test. You're Mr. Durden. That's, that's, that's what somebody would say if they're really trying to prove a test, though. Is this... Is this about to be... Is... is oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh, God. Marla, it's me. Have we ever had sex? This is a trick. No, Marla, I need to know... You mean you want to know if I think we're just having <laughs> sex or making love? Oh, so that's a yes. Just answer the question, Marla, please. Did we do it? I need to verify my reality. <laughs> you show me a sensitive side, then you turn into a total asshole. Is that a pretty accurate description of our relationship, Tyler? Whoa. What did you just call me? Say my name. Tyler Durden. Ty Say. I'm coming over. No, wait, wait, Marla, I'm not there. Say my name. Say my you name. You broke your promise. Whoa. Oh, shit. What the f going on here? I ask you for one thing. One simple thing. Why do people think that I'm you? Ah. Uh. Answer me. Why do people think that I'm you? I think you know. <laughs> no, I don't. Yes, you do. Because it's one of these. You got it. Yeah. No. Do not. Oh, dude. <laughs> Say it. Oh, no. Because we're the same person. That's right. We You're a good compartmentalizer. Oh, the shot. I look like you want to look. I think you want to. I am smart and capable. And most importantly, I'm free in all the ways that you are not. I'm a go getter. This is crazy. People do it every day. They talk to themselves. They see themselves as they'd like to be. They yeah. The courage you have to just run with it. Ooh. Ooh. Sometimes you're still you. We should do this again sometime. Other times you. Yeah. Imagine yourself watching me. If this is your first night at Fight Club. Yeah, you're just like just down the hall looking men. You're just letting yourself become Tyler Durden. <laughs> no, you have a house. Rented in your name. You have jobs. You have a whole life. You have night jobs because you can't sleep. Why are you stiff and make so? Marla, you. Marla Tyler. Uh, technically, Marla. Oh, sure. She knows too much. I think we're gonna have to talk about how this might compromise our goals. Oh boy. This is bullshit. I'm not listening to this. You are insane. No, you're insane. Yeah. It's called a changeover. The movie goes on, and nobody in the audience has any idea. Sure, the cigarette burns. <laughs> I gotta get out of here. <laughs> I need you to initial this list of phone calls, please. Ugh. Hello, Jeepers. It says right there, sir, between 2 and 3.30 this morning. Yup. Every night. I've been sleeping later. Has <laughs> yeah, has Tyler been taking over for longer? Deja vu. All over again. Yeah, with enough soap, one could blow up just about anything. Oh, wow. Oh, that's right. The whole face-off opening scene. I know that I've been acting very, very strange. Okay. I, I, I know that it's got to seem like there's two sides to me when you're on Two sides. You're Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Jacket. <laughs> I care about you, and I don't want anything bad to happen to you because of me. Huh. Your life is in danger. Oh, boy. I've involved you in something terrible that's about no. to happen. You are not safe. Shut up! Not safe. Shut up! Oh. You can't leave, Mark. Like, you're not the same. Oh. Empire's crumbling. Oh, I don't ever want to see you again. That's fine. If that's what it takes, here we go. Right <laughs> Seven years, somewhere or other, on the marquee. Take oh, this money and 
get on this bus, and I promise you, I will never bother you again if that's what you want. Shut up! <laughs> You're the worst thing that ever happened to me. Sure. Did he base Tyler on the actor Brad Pitt? Seven years of Tibet is on the marquee. I need you to arrest me. I am the leader of a terrorist organization responsible for numerous acts of vandalism and assault all over the city. Wow. This is a tightly regimented organization with many cells capable of operating completely independent of central leadership. Now go to the house, okay? 1537 Paper Street. That's our headquarters. Paper Street. In the basement, you're gonna find some bathtubs that have been used very recently to make large quantities of nitroglycerin. Oh. I believe the plan is to blow up the headquarters of these credit card companies and the TRW building. Wow, dude. Why credit card company? If you erase the debt record, then we all go back to zero. Yep. I really admire what you're doing. Oh no. You're a brave man to order this. You're a genius, sir. Oh no. You said if anyone ever interferes with Project Mayhem, even you, we gotta get us balls. Jeez. Oh. Big mistake, fellas. You said you'd say that. I'm not Tyler Durden. You told us you'd say that, too. Oh, my God. All right, I am Tyler Durden. <laughs> Listen to me. I'm giving you a direct <laughs> order. We are aboarding this mission right now. You said you would definitely say that. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Get out of your mind, you police officer. Oh, my God. It lurks everywhere. Ooh. The blade on that thing. I got him. Sir, we have to kill Mr. Durden. Stop fighting. Where's the rubber band? Can you get away from me? Yes. Drop it. Get down on the floor. Oh, they got his pants on the way off. He's running out of the streets in his underwear now. How far the mighty have fallen. I ran until my muscles burned and my veins pumped battery acid. I ran so far away. Running around you on the bench, man, you look like a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from you, that means a lot. <laughs> Whoa, nice. <laughs> oh, yep, we're here. At the base of it all. Oh boy. Ain't nothing you can do, right? There's gotta be a million contingency plans. <sighs> yeah. I'm stopping this. Greatest thing you've ever done, man. Nah. No. You know, there are 10 other bombs in 10 other buildings. God damn it, since when is Project Mayhem about murder? The buildings are empty. Security, maintenance, all our people. We're not killing anyone, man. We're setting them free. Ugh. Wouldn't do that. Not unless I knew which wires for what. If you know, then I know. Hey, that's good. Or. Oh! Maybe I knew you'd know, so I spent the whole day thinking about the wrong ones. Hey, hey, hey. The green one. Pull anyone but the green one. This guy always. I asked you not to do that. Ugh. He's out in the garage now, punching himself in the face. Get away from the van. The irony of Tyler. He's always got the like freshest drips and most opulent get-ups. Oof. Oh, here it comes. Oh! <laughs> That's an interesting cut to the security cam. Oh, oh. Oh. Ow. Bonk! <laughs> yeah. God, and the sound, it's just like the, the dissonant chorus at the beginning of 2001 or something. What? Okay, how is that all happening? Yep. Three minutes. This is it. The beginning. Oh, 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 oh. I think this is about where we came in. Would you like yep. to say a few words to mark the occasion? <laughs> I'm sorry. I still can't think of anything. <laughs> Out these windows, we will view the collapse of financial history. One step closer to economic equilibrium. Oh boy. Ow. Is she here? 
I'm begging you, please don't do this. I'm not doing this. We are doing this. This is what we want. No. <laughs> this is what we want. You is meaningless now. We have to forget about you. Experience ego death, Jack. You created me. I didn't create some loser alter ego to make myself feel better. Huh. Sure. Please call this off. Have I ever let us down? Uh, subjective. I will bring us through this. As always, I will carry you, kicking and screaming, and in the end, you will... And when you see one set of footprints in the sand, Tyler Durden was carrying you the whole time. But Whoa. this is too much. I don't want this. What do you want? You wanna go yeah, back to the shit job? Condo world watching sitcoms? Fuck you. I won't do it. Maybe a healthy balance is what it requires. I can figure this out. I can figure this out. This isn't even real. I got a zoom in your hand. I got a zoom in oh. my hand. Yes. You're seeing the Matrix now. <laughs> oh, yeah. You knew that. Oh, he doesn't even have to do it. On my head, Tyler. Yours. Oh, ours. Hmm. Yours, mine, and ours. Where are you going with this Ikea boy? <laughs> yeah, where are you going, Fjurg? Hey, it's you and me, friends. Tyler, <laughs> my eyes are open. Oh. oh my god, what a shot! Oh my god! Oh, and the smoke in his mouth, that's crazy. Whoa, whoa. Are you all right, sir? Oh, yeah, I'm okay. Ugh. So what happened? Oh, <sighs> no problem. Whoa. Oh, sir, he's not kidding. You look really awful. You need medical assistance. You're like Jackie boy right now. Hi, Marla. <laughs> Buh. What kind of sick game are you playing at? Putting me on a fucking bu Oh, my God, your face. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Marla, look at me. I'm really okay. How? Trust me. Everything's Amp gonna be fine. Exact. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> what a I'm needle drop. Very strange time in my life. You had <laughs> me at a very strange time in my life. Yeah. yeah. That needle drop, boy. Whoa! <laughs> Oh, where is your mind? This is down in some deep dark hole somewhere. Narrator, they call him. And they and they even spliced a fun little image in for us at the very end. Wow, dude. I'm going to need a minute to process this. <laughs> It's good though, because like after so many years of again having this movie, you know, built up and its you know status continuing to grow and shift as society continues to grow and shift, like you know, this this certainly was a substantial meal, some to chew on. You know, I would have been fascinated to have experienced this at the time in which it it you know was originated, but also from the here and now, fascinating experience. Uh I love this powder blue text for the credits here. Why why don't we take a second? I'm going to I'm going to just, you know, process this for a hot mo and uh let's 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 hear from our uh, video sponsors today. Completely in fitting with <laughs> this motion picture. <laughs> Thank you to Shopify for sponsoring, which is what we use for our merch store and is our game-changing partner in e-commerce. So whether you're launching a passion project or scaling to new heights, Shopify is the e-commerce powerhouse guiding you at every step. From creating your first online store to opening physical locations, Shopify makes it seamless. It's perfect whether you're selling exclusive merch or unique collectibles, thanks to their all-encompassing platform for both online and in-store sales. Their checkout system, unmatched! It's 36% more effective at converting visitors into buyers than other platforms. And let's not forget Shopify Magic, the AI tool that elevates your business with minimal effort. But seriously, reflecting on our journey using Shopify for www.rejectnationshop.com, it's been transformative. The transition, smooth, growth, exponential. Thank you again, Reject Nation. From simplifying sales to scaling our offerings, Shopify has been a cornerstone 
of our success. And Shopify isn't just for us. It powers 10% of US e-commerce, backing businesses big and small in over 175 countries. Their award-winning support always there to guide you. So ready to join the revolution? Sign up for Shopify at only a dollar a month at shopify.com slash rejects. All lowercase, shopify.com slash rejects. Start your Shopify success story now. Let's grow together with Shopify, team. Big thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video, a real game changer I've been using for years. That's right, years. So whenever they want to work with us, it's an instant yes. You've likely heard about ExpressVPN for online privacy and security, but there's more to it than that. However, there was a very real incident recently with Spectrum shutting down my internet and contacting me due to a suspecting hacking attempt. And funny enough, I realized I hadn't actually activated my ExpressVPN on my new laptop that I got a couple of months ago. So I was paying the consequences. Having faced a serious hacking issue on YouTube a couple of years ago, that made ExpressVPN my go-to for both security and freedom. I mean it. And yes, what you've heard is true. Believe me, this channel knows. You can use ExpressVPN to watch movies and shows on Netflix that are not available in your country. This means accessing a vast array of content of over 100 countries, like a global cinema at your fingertips. It's super easy. Open ExpressVPN, switch locations, refresh the browser, and there you have it. Whether it's K-dramas on South Korean Netflix, Hulu, BBC, iPlayer, YouTube, or more, ExpressVPN has you covered. And it's incredibly fast, ensuring no buffering or lag for smooth HD streaming. It's versatile too, working on not just computers, but phones, media consoles, smart TVs, and more. This means you can enjoy your favorite shows on anywhere, any screen, protect and elevate your internet experience. So if you want to get access to hundreds of new shows, use my link, expressvpn.com slash rejects. And you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's expressvpn.com slash rejects. So head to expressvpn.com slash rejects to learn more. Thank you again. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> God, man, finally. It, like, this movie has been looming over me since it came out way back in the day. I wasn't kidding. Like, this and Blade, I feel like, came out around the same time and were both movies where, like, I saw the poster in the, you know, newspaper section where they had all the movies and I, like, would cut it out and be like, oh, man, I don't know what this is. Uh, but I want to see it, you know, Mischief, Mayhem, and Soap. It grabbed me. Good marketing. And uh, I can't imagine what I would have gotten out of this if I'd watched it at the time of release, obviously. I think <laughs> I think I've kind of, at least from my vantage point here in this moment, I feel like uh, I, I've caught this at the right time in my life because obviously, I mean, you know, this is a, a movie it's been hot, hotly debated over time and and certainly you know whenever you see memes online of like the the quintessential if you idolize this character you're missing the point starter package figures you know you often see Tyler Durden uh, included among them and for good reason i mean this is uh, it's it's a fascinating sort of um Rorschach test, I guess I would call it, because, yeah, this is uh, it reminds me certainly of um, oh, God, what was the other movie that came to mind? Uh, just as we, American Psycho, certainly, where like there's a certain amount of people who really kind of uh, buy in wholeheartedly to the power fantasy that that movie presents and the uh, perspective of its lead character. And granted here, you know, the lead character is, you know, a dual is a split personality, essentially. Um, but, you know, Jack and Tyler are cut of the same cloth. They're two sides of the same mind. Uh, and yeah, it's it's the humanity or what's what's left of the humanity this like stunted uh kind of neutral human presence in jack being you know sort of further and further corrupted by you know this persona he dreamed up to you know realize what he sees as being his full potential and the way in which i, I found it fascinating you know because this is one of those movies that has that twist and i feel like it's hard it, it joins a pantheon or it joined a pantheon of you know, movies that that have some sort of, yeah, uh, alternate personality motif uh, either meant to, you know, shock us with a twist or I think here um, more directly just sort of comment like they, I think there are two uses often of this twist. Either it will be to get, you know, a shock in on you and, uh, you know, really pull the rug out and, and kind of uh, try and dazzle you with cleverness. Or I think, you know, this is an example of a movie where like it is a surprise. Certainly it is a twist, but I feel like it is more of a thematic element. And even though part of the fun I would imagine would be going back and rewatching the film and sort of noting where and how 
Tyler appears around other people and, you know, what their interactions are like. And, you know, when you trade, you know, the figurative, you know, visual representation for who is really talking in any given moment, you know, it's like, I'm sure you'll be switching out like they're like they acknowledge sometimes Jack is like on the periphery to sort of spectating and is sort of, um, you know, much further from the spotlight as he just lets Tyler take control and, and you know, and lets him grandstand and and really soaks in just the full complete indulgence of being Tyler maybe with with one toe still in reality then there are the times where yeah he's blacking out and becoming entirely Tyler and and granted we don't really see a heck of a lot of Tyler on his own but it is fascinating too because um yeah like uh, just thinking back Again, like this is one of those movies where you start to talk about it, you start to kind of think about it and break it down. And especially the way we shoot these, you know, here in real time, part of me is like, oh man, there's going to be so much more that probably would come from a second examination or just further rumination and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I thought this made really interesting use of a motif like that. And yeah, as a means of commenting on, you know, the kind of uh, position that we meet this guy in, or at least the perspective that is extolled through his narrations and his, you know, sort of declining mental state as the movie goes on this guy who you know it, it's funny he uh, what is it because because uh american psycho is brett easton ellis right and then this is chuck polinick uh american psycho author yes okay yeah brett easton ellis. so is it, like it's interesting that these should come from a similar moment in time for both literature and cinema because like these do feel very akin to one another in a sense because you have this protagonist who's living this yuppie you know uh is, you know uh catalog successful kind of life where he's got the condo and he's got all his furniture needs taken care of and he spends time you know meticulously orchestrating and stressing over material things stuff and his life has become this sort of empty cycle of clocking into work where he doesn't feel very autonomous or empowered you know he feels obviously the ennui that comes with being just a cog in a repeating cycle in a society that prioritizes productivity and efficiency while also you know sort of creating these wasteful frameworks in order to achieve that at least some of the time certainly is illustrated by moments in this movie like the when they're having that little meeting and the guy takes a break to be like you know efficiency is the top priority as we go through the motions of this presentation and so like it's a fun thought experiment and i can see why again much like an american psycho or a joker or something like that um how you might have again it's easy to probably look upon this and and have it what am I trying to say? It's like there's not as clear of a prescribed, I guess, message only in that I would imagine that this is the kind of work that especially kind of peers back into the reader. And I can certainly see how some people would feel uh, gravitated toward and enticed by Tyler Durden's whole philosophy. And I can understand the sort of, again, feeling of of anger and sort of rage with no direction or no like proper outlet and um yeah just the resentment and uh and i don't know the the sort of decay that can put on your soul as you're sort of further and further consumed by you know the the bullshit of modern living and you know you don't feel very in control of or very powerful in your circumstances perhaps you know these are two guys who are living in the illusion of that and certainly american psycho you know looks at it more from the top whereas this is looking at at it more from the bottom you know it's like you have the the white collar yuppie guy in american psycho with that kind of specific ennui and detachment and disregard for human humanity in particular and then here you know you're looking up as you know uh, from the perspective of the marginalized and the forgotten not in terms of maybe uh you know th there are various ways in which you know you can find yourself in that position this way is looking at it from you know the sort of uh the middle class rat race kind of perspective where it's like yeah you're just one of a number of faceless cogs in a big machine and it doesn't really care about you and it just incentivizes you to keep consuming and to keep fretting about things that don't really matter matter when meaningful experience lies right outside and just outside the track that society sort of prescribes to you and then you know you basically watch as these characters these people who gravitate toward the fight club you know find their 
uh, uh, means of sort of, yeah, stripping all that away, you know, down to the bone, sort of orchestrating this weird hyper physical ego death. And like, it's, it's a fascinating thing. And I think that, that it, it earns its contentious and also, you know, uh, well regarded place in, you know, both cinema and I'm sure literary history in that. Yeah. Like, there are a lot of people who probably take the wrong message from this and, and who probably do just idolize Tyler wholesale. Um, and it's tricky because it's like certain of those philosophies kind of make sense. You know, it's like at least some of the baselines of, again, you know, not being so consumed by material items and, and yeah, having a cookie cutter life because that's what society tells you to do if, you know, you're missing out on, you know, th there's so many things that we, yeah, get wrapped up in and that feel so important and so, you know, sort of life altering or shaping or whatever it is so pertinent and they really aren't. And there are so many things that feel like rules in society that really aren't. But this is kind of taking the frustration that comes with, again, that lack of control and that lack of, you know, feeling that you're unique and valuable and all that stuff. And it's taking it to like the furthest possible opposite extent where by the end they're making uh, their own faceless, you know, little, uh, uh, you know, this militia of sorts. But that is basically all kind of trickling down from the orders of one guy and this one ideology and nobody has names. Everyone's kind of faceless. They all dress the same and nobody asks questions and they're all just sort of like 100 percent all in on this ideology and it's, you know, it's just an equal opposite, you know, sort of corrosive system that they create. And then you're watching as Jack, you know, is sort of in the middle of all this being pulled from, yeah, the ennui and the malaise that come with the rat race of society into this feral state of, yeah, like squatting in this old building and making soaps and learning how to home make bombs and, and then, you know, literally taking to the streets and, and committing acts of terror and trying to physically destroy these things that keep us, again, complacent and distracted by so many things that are unimportant by comparison to, you know, the things in life that really make us want to, you know, live and reach our best potential. And so it's like, you're watching all this mayhem again, and uh, this, this, you know, sort of wild, unbridled, you know, corrosive id on display, basically. It's just following, like, the most base animal instincts, the most, it's making a collective, but out of, like, this individualist, uh, kind of, I, I don't know, it's weird. It's, there's an interesting sort of individual, but then the group is also an individual because of how homogenized everything is, and we are a monolith. You know, nobody talks about this thing outside of the moments in which we, uh, you know, meet up. And, and that even, too, like, there are lots of great clues throughout to the Tyler twist, I think, just, just again, thinking back on this first watch with, like, the flickers where he shows up, or, or certain choice uh, moments of dialogue that are certainly going to uh, elude me now, but... Um, but yeah, just like different ways in which they uh, uh, kind of draw attention to and, and foreshadow the twist, I think, are kind of fun and interesting. As well as as in this moment, I'm, I'm reminded of the line where he basically says, like, you know, the fight club, this this thing we do doesn't exist. It only exists when we meet up to do this. And uh, and yeah, just like little cheeky uh, nods in the dialogue like that. And so then, yeah, physically in that moment, you know, Jack is in the center of the room addressing everyone as Tyler while the Jack persona, yeah, is sort of hangs on the periphery and observes. And it's interesting just to see, yeah, the different positions and proximities, the personalities and habit. Or even the way, again, just like when they're at the house, just Tyler is always just kind of like bouncing around in the back and he's always like munching on stuff. And he he's, I, I wonder if they even maybe had him appearing and disappearing from places that wouldn't entirely make sense like he does feel like somebody who's just kind of walking around all through the back of this guy's mind uh you know jack <laughs> and uh and yeah just like the way this all starts out this is yeah definitely a stylized movie the dialogue and the pace all have a a real rhythm about them um and i like the way that ed norton you know really brought this permeating sense of malaise and detachment throughout um and i'm reminded of that one scene where he's like you know lying to the officer on the phone or, or feigning concern over his blown up apartment uh as the guy's investigating and it's like you're watching an actor give a performance where a guy is acting over the phone and you know it's always a fun little meta layer where you're like you know jack is probably not you know the actor that ed 
Norton is. So to watch somebody do that layer of I'm in character, but this character is acting. It's always an interesting thing. And I think that's a, another sort of nice little um, just spiritually attuned uh, little detail here. Um, and yeah, just his interplay off of Brad Pitt. And I do wonder if that's like a, an Easter egg that actually kind of cements that because Brad Pitt certainly is cast for a reason. Uh, he, I, I, again, at this time, I feel like his profile would have been pretty high and he's still in the younger phase of his career. So he's like, you know, super hot as is on display frequently throughout this. Um, and so I wonder if it is that thing where it's where it is that Jax, you know, knows who Brad Pitt is and, uh, you know, has seen some of his movies and just chose this guy subconsciously as you know the embodiment of all the things that he wished he could be his most alpha and his most masculine instincts and um yeah again that's that's the kind of interesting and conflicting thing about this is that there are aspects of tyler's message that are enticing and that do you know sort of call upon you to free yourself from yeah the shackles of the mundane the stuff in your life that's weighing you down because it's not actually important and like that scene where they hold the guy up at uh the liquor store and he you know grills him about like what'd you go to school for you know uh stuff not nah, you know, be more specific than that come on you know like this is important this is a life and death situation what did you go to school for biology why biology stuff i don't know i wanted to be a vet you know like getting past all these layers you know that that we accumulate one some of them are thrust on us some of them we pick up in in different ways but you know society life in society especially in modern society you know it is a, a hard thing to find your footing in especially if you are not you know in the upper crust of it you know it can be really hard to find purpose in life and feel like you're in tune with like the reason that you're act actually here and you know yeah i think the interesting thing and the thing that makes this movie so heavily debatable is the fact that yeah on face value aspects of Tyler's, you know, call and philosophy, you know, do kind of uh, uh, ask that you, yeah, free yourself in some ways, you know, harshly, maybe ripping a Band-Aid off to kind of free yourself of, you know, so many things that you've been saddled with and, and to create the sort of rush of immediacy that forces you to make a choice, make a change, make a growth of some kind. Um, but yeah, it's just taken to the most rotten extent because it's not tempered by anything it becomes just this festering destructive miasma where it is you know seeking basically to inflict this ideology on everyone and everything to yeah reshape the world you know as we you know this this angry marginalized few sort of see fit angry entitled disaffected you know, to, to pull a buzzword, like it is the worst of all the masculine instincts kind of amalgamated together and then inflicted upon the world around. Because it's true. It's like it's interesting. You know, it's like, yeah, I think it's true that you don't really there are things you just don't ever know about yourself until you're in a fight or until you're in some kind of intense, maybe even life or death situation. And uh, and there are ways to deal with and sort of broach that, you know, that can be healthy or whatever or at least can make you into a well-rounded person and i feel like that's the interesting thing here is that like you know nobody's trying to get to the point of well-roundedness it's like an extreme reaction to an extreme feeling that's begat by just a bunch of little you know again mundane factors building up and overlapping into yeah a pile of what can often very much feel like bullshit and make people feel invisible and alone but that but that, yeah, uh, you don't need to go destroying everyone's world literally to uh, make change on or to wake up from. I mean, it's up to the individual to wake up from this anyway and uh, not necessarily, again, to just inflict this chaos and this theory wantonly on everybody. And the further society goes and now we have a much more, you know, sort of technologically inclined society than when this movie was made. But it's still there in the way they reject TV and media and too the way you have ads throughout this movie. I was curious and I bet it's a little bit of both as to whether there was like product placement intentionally just to get budget or if it was also kind of messaging that, yeah, these advertisements and, and this stuff, this onslaught of stuff 
stuff is just omnipotent and ever encroaching upon your reality. Um, you know, there's just, yeah, there's a lot to what Tyler Durden is getting at, or at least like the seed that grows this gnarled tree that is Tyler Durden. Um, you know, the waking up from, you know, the, the mundane rat race that chips away at your soul and that just mutes your passion and makes you feel, you know, castrated or impotent or, or, or you know, ailing in various ways, marginalized in various ways, you know, breaking out of that and, and creating circumstances in which you have to really just sort of be in the moment here and now making a choice and, you know, unlocking the potential of, of just the randomness of being a lot. Like there are ways in which that message is valid and there are healthy ways of enacting it. But part of the point is that you're watching this philosophy filtered through the most extreme reaction to what is happening. I mean, this guy snaps, he blows up his apartment. By the end, we realize this guy snapped, uh, you know, blew up the apartment full of stuff he'd spent so much time sculpting and fussing over. And then, yeah, completely had a wholesale rejection of, you know, the entire societal system. And then by the end, realizes like, oh, God, I got to meet somewhere in the middle, actually. Uh, You've met me at a very strange time in my life where I'm finally maybe starting to learn that like, yeah, you do need to take control of your life and there are certain people you do just need to tell off. There are certain things that you do need to, you know, uh, reject or refuse to stand for or whatever it is. However, you can't just go forcing this on everybody and assuming that this one ideology is good for everyone because that's kind of what's happening and that's kind of what's happening in the thing that you're reacting to. (laughs) Um, So yeah, and then you have Marla on the other side who is like just as much sort of left to languish, you know, underneath the shadow of, you know, a pretty uncaring and and constantly cycling system. And I mean, their relationship, a part of me was expecting her not to be real by the end too, just because again, like whenever she steps out into traffic, there's this just sort of like un- otherworldly thing where like, you know, just like the cars gracefully are always missing her. And like whenever Ed Norton steps out on the street, it's complete opposite, just like chaos immediately. Um, but yeah, her presence, I would be curious to go back and re-examine because, you you know, he he meets this girl in his space. And I mean, there are women in these support groups, but I think that there's something else interesting in the fact that, yeah, he's and, and what a twisted hook to start off with this guy who is, you know, emotionally repressed and who feels, again, just marginalized by the circumstances of his life and, and made sort of voiceless and impotent and and, uh, you know, unimportant by all these other concerns around him that he's just sort of in the middle of maintaining, uh, you know, he finds a means of, you know, unlocking his vulnerability and his emotions, but also in like a weird experimental kind of anthropological sociopathic kind of way, (laughs) crashing uh, these support groups, pretending to have these ailments, becoming territorial over them, gatekeeping them. And then this girl shows up who is this is in the same form as him. It's like there are other women in the support groups and stuff, but you don't really ever, they don't really ever break out of the ensembles of those moments. Whereas like Marla, you know, is, you know, kind of the, the equal, you know, female counterpart in certain ways to Jack, except a little less unhinged, uh, you know, from a different life per- experience, different perspective, etc. And like watching them work out who gets which support groups when and all that stuff. And just, yeah, that idea that this guy is like unlocking his ability to like feel these these unbroken swells of emotion that have probably been building up and festering for so long only to then swing back in the opposite direction like it's an interesting sort of uh uh exploration of yeah of coming of age when you're growth is sort of stunted by a lot of the things that can stunt growth in society. It's easy to grow up into a 30 year old boy or child or whatever he says there. So yeah, coming to this place where it's like he gets these extreme emotional outbursts and and outpourings, you know, through these, you know, intimate interactions with these, uh, these survivors or these people who are coping with various ailments, people who actually have real pro that's the thing is, is I think it doesn't help to be like, these people have real problems and the character of Jack doesn't. It's like their problems are, are much more grim and existential in a sense, certainly. Uh, and you know, it doesn't always, it doesn't pay to start comparing, you know, problems, but yeah, it's like, if you're looking at it from the outside, you're like this guy who doesn't have 
any sort of like real life threatening problem at the moment other than, yeah, the sort of oppressive malaise that can set on when you're living in capitalist society. Uh, yeah, it's like he's this grifting sort of cipher that comes in and and that genuinely seems to, I guess, maybe want to feel something, but also doesn't understand enough to process all of those emotions. And then, yeah, instead of, you know, I guess the, the reason that doesn't fully work is because, yeah, it, it's it still doesn't fix the, you know, sort of sense of rage from within and the and the longing to like take some kind of meaningful action to catch everyone's attention and change everything. And I think there's also just the idea that, you know, nihilistic destruction only leads to and begets more nihilistic destruction. And so by the end of the movie, I almost feel like, yeah, it's like he went to one extreme, you know, just sort of trying to understand emotion the most extreme way possible in order to get that catharsis, then going switching over to the most physical catharsis, tearing down my soul first, then tearing down my body and the world around me, and then finally resting at the end in a sort of middle place of like, you know what? Maybe instead of like trying to divide everything up and, and keep, you know, here's your stuff, Marla, and here's my stuff over here, you know, instead I think we can kind of look at the world around and realize that we're both caught up in this and there's probably not a lot we can do to completely control and change it because we are just two small figures in a crumbling, you know, skyline here. However, um, you know, maybe something in between these two instincts can lead us forward and maybe together we can do that instead of, again, homogenizing and tearing down and destroying and, again, just, you know, kind of devolving into amoral, anarchic chaos. Because, yeah, like, there are ways in which, you know, we have been separated from the natural world and our animal instincts and our, you know, sort of traditional roles as hunter-gatherers and, and things like that. Um, however, <laughs> you know, uh, there's a way to embody those things without just perpetuating wanton toxic destruction, which is, you know, sort of the furthest extent that this ideology, this fight club grows into is just like the unchecked, you know, id, the unchecked desire to just, you know, destroy, rebuild and destroy again and probably not even rebuild that, you know, sturdily in the first place. And then, yeah, sort of waking up to the idea uh, when it's maybe too late, you know, that uh, that, yeah, maybe this ideology is a bit problematic, a bit toxic. And once you let that cat out of the bag and once that, you know, spreads to enough people, you might not be able to contain it again. And then you might have some real problems on your hands, as are demonstrated by the fact that he's like running around being like, oh, my God, what have I done? What have I created? Just this 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 one, you know, sort of snap has, you know, spread so far beyond me into all these other people. And, uh, and is creating, yeah, this sort of dystopic, you know, terrorist threat now, which, you know, as time moves forward, and it's like we've seen it in movies like The Batman as well with the Riddler and the way, you know, that is pulling, obviously, from radicalization that has happened online that's been spurred on by, you know, movies and, and stories and ideologies similar to this, you know, and certainly inspired by this. You know, it's, it's a fascinating, uh, again, piece of social satire and I guess that's always the risk of satire as well is that it, it always will run the risk of being misinterpreted as something you know genuine <laughs> by people who simply share the ideology that is being satired uh, so I mean yeah it's 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 always fascinating to watch a movie or a piece like this because you just feel the way in which again what it's communicating and, and the ideas it's exploring are very much sort of relevant and alive and and permeate our current moment, perhaps even more than they did, you know, or at least in a more visible way than they did when this was released originally. I can see why a lot of people latch on to this, probably, who do, you know, kind of feel like they're owed something and are angry and who want to, yeah, tear down the complacent society that doesn't care about you and that feeds you all this meaningless nonsense and expects you to just keep the cycle humming while a couple people at the top really live the good life 
while the rest of us are down here aspiring. Like, there's a lot of legitimate anger that permeates this. And yeah, just like the most toxic extent of all the most masculine instincts of counteracting it. And so, yeah, it's like Marla is a total mess, too, and is a junkie and various other things and is, yeah, again, living in complete poverty, but has like a totally different sort of uh, means of flitting through these scenes and scenarios. And so like her mania and the Tyler Durden mania are like very different, but they do pose these interesting sort of complementary yin yang ish influences on uh, Jack, you know, as his, his little table here. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like there's, I'm sure there's plenty that's already been said about this movie and I feel like I'm rambling a bit just because it is such a, a piece and it is, uh, pretty rich with, you know, both style and themes. I mean, David Fincher obviously is well known for having an intense, you know, sort of, uh, eye for exactly what he wants and, and for exactly how he wants his movie paced out and composed and what the rhythm should be. And yeah, I mean, this was wild um, and irreverent and, and, and it certainly had a, a pace to it, but it wasn't like, yeah, some kind of like, you know, create, it wasn't like watching like a Guy Ritchie movie where it's like every moment is like zip, 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 but it does constantly have this percolating music and this really stylized dialogue but that isn't too wacky you know and uh and yeah just like some really fascinating and interesting cinematic choices and two with david fincher i mean certainly when to use cg and and certainly there are like there's that one uh, love making scene there's the uh, kitchen exploding and stuff like that uh uh the bomb wires things that you know use cg in ways that you would probably need it for you know to do what he wants to do but it is interesting because we think of these guys and and there's been talk late of you know like oh no cg and whatever the killer or whatever um but you know and even in panic room i remember seeing a, a featurette about like how they cg completely one of the sequences or something like that and you can tell more now but i think it is interesting just to see those moments in a movie like this uh because again you do you have like so many people who have shown up in comic book movies and big blockbusters and stuff so to see these like totally cg sequences but that are for completely different purposes than they would normally nowadays be used in uh is it's just sort of fun and interesting and uh and yeah like the whole concept of the fight club itself and just all the people that it attracts and all these again different guys who are yearning in some way shape or form to feel powerful or to at least feel in control and and yeah the euphoria and freedom it, it is fascinating it is a an unruly and a multifaceted piece for sure and uh, i'm definitely going to be thinking about it just more and more. I'm excited to hear more discussion now that I actually have the full picture in mind and, and can sort of jump into the nitty gritty details because again, you know, this movie famously carries with it, uh, this sort of, uh, just this, mantle of being a problematic fave for a lot of people. And I could absolutely see how you would watch this from one perspective versus another. I found this to be very darkly funny and I can imagine a lot of people maybe not, finding it so much or finding different aspects darkly funny and it all depends on again where your humanity lies and and how you you know process things like marginalization and rage and uh and just the friction that comes with living in the system in general but yeah i thought this was a pretty effective piece of sort of darkly comedic social satire and film stylings obviously again great soundtrack uh really well composed by david fincher and again like this is a pulpy movie uh i, I i've you know we just watched zodiac recently like he, i'm used to the more restrained fincher and this one while it's not like a horror movie or anything like there are some real harsh moments of violence and gore and stuff like that and uh, and yeah i think the cast all does a really nice job you got jared leto before he was jared leto uh meatloaf in here and of course brad pitt and edward norton uh, are are you know great as the center of the movie helena bottom carter too seeing her in a role very befitting of, of kind of what I associate with a lot of the characters she plays but in a mode that's a little bit before you know her peak like blockbuster version of that with Harry Potter and things like that um, so yeah like this is so much to sum up uh, but I'm really glad that I've finally seen it. It, it, it it is and isn't what I was expecting in a lot of ways and uh, and yeah like I can see the treachery of this movie as a power fantasy 
but I can also see the the potency and the salience as a cautionary tale. And uh, yeah, I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts on it. So uh, let me know what you're thinking on Fight Club. Is it one of your favorite movies? Uh, you know, do you hate this movie? What's your take on it? Uh, yeah, hit me up in the comments, and we'll see you on the next one. Much love for now, and as always, cheers. Thank you.